Hey, Adam. Yeah. I noticed you're not at the Jacob Collier can, keyboard today. Can we be done with the Jacob Collier well, keyboard? Well, we are. Thing? You don't have your headphones on. You're not playing. I'm working on my no sound stuff. <laughs> Adam Ellis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily Jazz Advice. Coming at you today, uh, brought to you by Old Granddad Bourbon. No, not brought to you by Old Granddad. We just have it out. Uh, we're not even drinking it. But This is a high rye, well, we because we finished our glasses. This is a high rye mash bill. What does that mean? I don't know. But Old Granddad, if you're listening, uh, become a sponsor of the podcast. We are sponsored, though, by Is Old Granddad s- still alive? It doesn't say dead granddad. Right, I'm going to do a little dead. research while you tell them about Open Studio. Uh, yeah, we're brought to you by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com for all of our courses. We have a ton of jazz courses. We have piano courses by Peter Martin and Jeffrey Kieser. We have a new piano course by Elio Altas, brilliant Ooh. Brazilian pianist. That I've of, been taking that course. That's really good, yep. man. What do you know it's, about the Afachasse? I know a lot about it. Afachasse. Yeah. I, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but I know how to play it now. Afachasse, Afachasse. Yeah. <laughs> well, you kind of turned it into an, a, another <laughs> well, kind of, like, something else there. No. Oh, it's um I'll tell you okay it's not for the beginner pianist but it's not only certainly advanced players um will get so much out of it and so quick like this will tight if you think you know Brazilian grooves yeah but if you're like an intermediate player and you think you know bossa nova or you only know bossa nova first of all you will learn how to play the real bossa nova but you're going to learn these other the samba the affiche man the solo piano samba lesson has fa- changed the my five life five basic brazilian grooves yeah solo piano samba something i never was really confident in and I i'm know. feeling good about it right now and then the way elio just play he demonstrates everything we have complete performances on stuff which is that's always the best way to learn For right sure. you know so sure. it's a fun one check that out brazilian jazz piano at open studio jazz.com Hey, do you know what we're talking about today? No, and this was going to be a fun thing because I think we've never done an episode. I feel so free. I don't have my computer here. Yeah. I don't have my phone. I don't have anything. We usually have copious notes. Yep. Um, copious in parentheses or air quotes. But I always know what I'm talking about or think I do or you know what you're talking about. But rarely, well, I think you still do. I literally don't know the subject. Like you could say this is going to be anything and I'm going to have to roll with it. All right, I'm going to read you this. It's a question from an email okay. from Gerald. I'm going to read you the email, and I want you to title it. You, you do the subject. Okay. We're done, okay? Okay. Let's see how close we get mm. to what I came up with. Peter and Adam, the other day uh, we were playing a tune with a vocalist. The mm. tune had a vocal pickup. The question was how to get the vocalist in on pitch. There were two suggestions. Play a vamp or have the keyboard just hit the tonic chord and let the vocalist take it from there. I considered the latter kind of courting. Someone else objected to the former. Right. How about some ideas how to deal with this situation? You were fan, Gerald. That's a good question. What Thank do you, you, you Gerald. What do you title Okay, the, today's episode is going to be titled, let's do a little stall music, a little stall percussion here. Um, here, I got you. No, no, I, I got you. I don't even need that. No, I got it. Marketing, brilliant. Um, wait, what are we talking about again? Oh I forgot. No. <laughs> no, so this is going to be... Trouble with the vo- trouble accompanying the vocalist? Question mark. We got you covered. Write it down, Ryan. Paste it all over iTunes. Is that cool? <laughs> Come up with a clickbaity thumbnail. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of. But I mean, that's that's encapsulating what the question. Say is. Say it I again. Think. Trouble with the vocalist. We got you covered. Okay. Trouble accompanying the vocal. Maybe I, I had setting up a vocalist, but yours is much more compelling. Yeah, it is. Not much. I mean, mine is just say Immensely. what you see, Adam. But yeah, yeah. 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 I same, think it's a good thing, question. Basically. And uh, you know what's funny is what? both examples. Did this happen to you this weekend? No, it didn't. But no. both examples that Gerald gave are two <laughs> things I would totally just do. <laughs> yeah. Either or. Either or. Kind of randomly, right? Yeah. No, there might be some different situations. There's definitely but... different situations and there's different things you can do. But yeah. those two are actually a really good option. I don't think yeah. it's corny at all to do a vamp. No. And or just lay down a chord. Yeah. If you have to. And there's other things that we can probably get into as well, you know, typical and maybe atypical. But um, I think that now did he talk about like well obviously it's some kind of groove. If, if you're setting about, up a vamp, I yeah, think it's, it's got to be groove. So we're not talking necessarily a ballad here, which would definitely lend itself more to just like although you can certainly vamp on a ballad. You could vamp on a ballad, but I mean that would lend itself more to just playing a chord or whatever. Yeah. I think the difficulty depending on like what the what type of groove, and we may need to know a little bit more. Well, we'll, we'll just sort of talk about general situations, sure. things that would apply. Is that a vamp? Um, is you know of course can be used in many different places it can be typically at the end at the beginning 
as like a segue in between. I mean, really kind of anywhere. But the idea is that you're sitting in. Yeah, we're vamping right now. Much as we vamp on this show a little bit, it's something repeating over and over again, right? Over a similar groove, right? Even when you don't want it to keep. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, no, no. But I mean, it's something repetitive, either harmonically, melodically. And, and that was kind of melody of the bass note. Harmony staying the same, rhythmic thing repeating, something that gets you into some kind of drone-like continuation of a feel. So if you do it at the beginning to set up the vocalist, it's really no different than just setting up the tune. You want to either use it in two different primary ways, I would see, as an exact setup to what you're about to play. So like you're laying out the table, like you're telling people, come on into the dining room. We are about to have, let me tell you about the menu tonight. And you actually tell them everything as opposed to maybe if you did a kind of vamp that was something's different and it could just be one thing. In fact, I think one thing only changing from the vamp to the beginning of a tune can be very effective. And that's like, come right in. We don't know what we're having yet, but it's going to be vegetable. Yeah. And bam, it's a carrot, you know, and then so then you expose it. So there's a little bit of mystery or drama to that. So that might be like you're vamping over that. But then you go into another key when you start. Same feel, same key. I mean, not same key, different harmony, you know, and now the tune. Yeah. So you set up the feel. It's not just like totally out of leg. You're playing up samba and then all of a sudden you go to swing. But. There's one element that's a little bit different, and I I love doing that kind of thing. That, to me, because you want the intro on some level, an introduction, a, um, and I, I know he was asking, Gerald was asking more about, like, I think from the standpoint of, like, specifically with a singer and, like, making he or she comfortable maybe and, you know, making that work. Setting up the key for them. Yeah, so there's always the logistical side, but it's really all about the audience, and an introduction has to introduce the tune no matter what. I mean, the key, though, to what we were just talking about, and I think the key to taking the vamp away from sort of cheesy, corny territory that we could be talking about is what just happened when we were when right. we were demoing that, which is like... Wait, that it, wasn't cheesy? I mean, it is, for sure. <laughs> Sorry. It is for sure, but uh, sorry, it's hard to talk and play. So it's not I just. I can talk and play. Uh, you have oh, to yeah. talk like this. Yeah. No, it's not just going straight into. Right. You know, it's like actually setting up the singer. Ah, sorry. You know what I mean? Like giving right. them something to grasp onto. Yep. Like, here, everybody, we're going from here to here. Right, right. And you can do that. Don't think like, and even if you think that the singer is a little bit weak or whatever, like, don't, I mean, we want to be supportive. We have to be supportive. It's it's in our best interest for the performance to be supportive. So I think the the biggest thing, like, these are just sort of general ideas for doing the introduction. How much you need to lead, as we say in the business, the vocalist yeah. and provide them with the note. Like, first of all, you got to know the melody so, sure. you, so you know where they're Most coming important. in. Yeah. Because a lot of times I hear pianists, guitarists, or even just rhythm sections in right. general. They'll be like... They're like, that's the chord, that's the five, yeah. but, but they don't give them... And yeah. the melody's here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, and that's the hardest thing, Ooh. you know. Now, there's certain singers that can do that. You got to know that, though. Yeah. You know, and there's certain singers. I remember playing with Betty Carter. She was like, she had very good ears, and there was only occasionally, well, first of all, according to her, she never needed like a note or whatever. Right. But there were a couple places I noticed. So that's my job, though, to figure that out. She's not going to tell me. I have to know that. And I have to know when she doesn't need it so that I don't play it. Not yeah. necessarily play some of this clash, but to know that, because, you know, a lot of singers get upset if you make it too obvious. Like, ding, 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 ding. Now that's right. your note. And you look at them. Yeah. I mean, that's that's bad. Yeah, that's bad for It's not good, not good. No bueno, as so, we say. So, Gerald, your other option here of just setting up a chord for whatever the singer... So my question is, why just set up one chord? I mean, you could Come set on, them up Gerald. with the tonic, but you're the pianist, man. If the that's tonic right. is C, why yep. would you just start on C, man? You could go. You could right. start here. Right. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, if you're at a smooth jazz club, you could do that, I guess. Oh, come on, man. That's, <laughs> that's just my modern sound. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking, but uh, you know what I'm saying though is yeah. like you can you can just take four bars of chords, whatever you want to do, and and set up that one chord. That's how you think about it. I'm setting up that tonic chord or the five chord usually. And I think of especially good times to do that or when you got to think about where you're going. Right. Right. So it's not just the first chord. Yeah, you got to think about harmonically and, and and rhythmically what the groove is. But what happens then? Like, is it a very um, sort of static? harmonic situation when the melody starts if it is like say the first four bars are all sitting on a one chord yeah that to me would be a great opportunity to do something 
exploratory with the harmony before they give it a little bit of a a little dramatic flair with that mm. and then bam set it up if you if you do all that right before the the melody is already going to go a lot of places you're doing we, giant steps you're doing giant steps yeah giant steps doesn't need a big complicated thing it just as, as an intro as we say, it might be putting a hat on a hat if we did that. Could Perhaps. Be a hat on a hat. Yeah. I've been wanting to put that in all week. There we go. We've also talked about putting a bonnet on a yarmulke, but that's for another. <laughs> that's for another show. Um, but yeah, I think that that's the, the the main thing. Like, and when this gets fun, when you can kind of just improvise this, is of course if you know the vocalist, you have to be like a little bit sort of down the middle in terms of how much you're giving and not giving if you don't know them because you don't want to insult them. Right. But you, you got to give them that support. But that's usually not that hard to find kind of find that middle ground. It's like if you're meeting somebody for the first time, you can't be like, "Hey, how you doing?" and pat them on the back and hug them. They might not be a toucher. That's right. So you got to kind of, but but you can use the body language and that kind of a thing. A good vocalist will kind of turn to you if they need. A little bit more um and that's not it's usually a note or a harmonic thing but it could be sort of whatever feel watch how they're using their arms and all that kind of stuff body yeah. language is very important in this situation another great thing you could do is without chords or a vamp is i use the actual metal melody itself Ooh, now we're now now we're i love it i love it and you're kind of combining that with a little bit of a vamp a little bit of a vamp you did a little dopey i on. didn't even have to do the vamp though no, I, you didn't. I did that for my own that was a, that pleasure. was a bonnet on top of a top on, <laughs> on top a of a bit. cat in the hat <laughs> that was a little bit i could have done a vamp I, you know what i should do is set up that here here's here's gerald here's the, the ultimate <laughs> and then vamp <laughs> that's that's that's, that's the tercenary uh, hat. That's a yarmulke <laughs> on top of a of a of a pope hat on top of a, <laughs> a pope hat. on top, on of, top a, of a of a, of a um, yeah a bonnet. <laughs> Let's go with the bonnet. That's been working <laughs> for us. <laughs> that's the least offensive. I love option. how the bonnet that bonnet actually could work with the others because isn't that like on the side? Kind it of? is on the side. Yeah, <laughs> we're like a top hat on a bonnet. Wait, that's actually not a bad look. Not a, so that actually the. The top hat on top of the bonnet yeah. would be when you did the melody and it went to the vamp because that actually sounded good. And the cool thing with that is like now you set up the vocalist and the groove. Yeah, you can extend it as much as you want and you know that he or she's going to know because it stays in there. Oh, bam. And you don't have to give anything then. No, they hear so it. you're giving yourself some, some flexibility. They hear it. Well, this is a great question, Gerald, and yep. uh, thanks for answering it. Let's so, talk about something real quick that's very dear and dear I heard, to we, my heart. We don't have much time. We don't have, we much, don't have time. much time. Like and subscribe to this bad boy. Do it, If you watch it on the YouTube, we got lurkers out there. We got, we got a team of analysts back there that are looking at YouTube analytics every day. They watch what you're watching when you watch it, and they know if you're pressing that like button. Actually, that's not true. Don't be an we old don't granddad. Have that. Don't be an old granddad. Don't be this guy. Old granddads don't know what the like button is. Don't. Okay, my dad is an old granddad. Yeah. Very sharp guy, though. He sends me YouTube links sometimes. By links, he does not actually... He emails them to me, even texts them to me, but they come as search parameters. Oh by that, goodness. I mean he'll say... Go to YouTube and search, search for Yasha Heifetz violin. And then he says, click the top one and watch it. It's like four instructions, right? <laughs> Don't be that. Don't be that guy. Okay, press the... No. Shout Actually, out, he subscribes to stuff out on to YouTube. Bill Martin. Yeah, yeah. What's up, Bill? No, but I mean, like like this because that kind of keeps the love going with YouTube. For sure. And if you're on uh, iTunes podcast, Apple Music, well, we just went off with that. That's okay. Oh, we're losing we lose it. Here we go. And <laughs> you'll hear it.